So I'm back for another PvP related video, and indeed PvE, honestly, this applies to that as well. In this video, we're going to be comparing all the weapon buffs to see where they stand. What one's best? Are they even worth using? The results will surprise you, and in the end, we'll find out is it more worthwhile investing in strength and dex for damage, or do buffs give enough of a damage boost to make them actually worthwhile? So first things first, gonna go over how I've done the test. So, getting the base longsword damage, the longsword is just at 10 strength, 10 dex, and we've got his defences on screen using the handy dandy damage calculator, as you all know, it works. So as you can see, we're doing 111 base damage off the longsword, so any extra damage that we're getting is, you know, from the buff itself. So to find out how much actual AR the buff is applying to your weapon, what we've done is we've got the damage calculator, we put in his, like, whatever element we're using at the time, that defence and his current absorption for that, then I apply the buff, I hit him with it, and we take 111 off it. So that means that whatever we're left with is the amount of damage the buff is doing to him. So then to find out how much AR that is applying to your weapon, because we have his elemental defences in the damage calculator, all I need to do is play about with the AR setting until the amount of damage that we get is the same as the total damage minus 111, and then that way we can see quite accurately how much AR is being applied to the weapon. And that way we can obviously just see how the buffs are, because we can tell exactly how much AR they apply to the weapon at whatever given level. So the first buffs we come to are the resins. So how do they compare to the other buffs? Well, they are almost useless, but there is one kind of specific situation where they do have a place, which we'll get to. Now, there might well be a slight margin of error here in terms of the damage output of the resins, as they do give kind of iffy results back, as we can see. But we can see that the fire resin gives us about 85, magic gives us about 88, 93 for lightning, and 95 for dark. So, dark is the winner here. The wiki says 85, 98, 95, 95 respectively, so this is about the same as our results. So it's pretty clear that only the dark pine resin is even really worth using. So in terms of knowing what buff to use and when, there's an interesting formula. If you're going against a faith build, don't use the dark resin because faith builds have high dark resistance. If you're going against intelligence, just don't use magic because that gives you magic resistance. Now, if you're going against a strength build, they have high fire resistance, so definitely don't use the fire resin then. Now, it's kind of impossible to know if you're going against someone with a high endurance build, because that's what gives you lightning defense, so technically the best fallback is to just go use the dark pine resin. So we'll tackle the buffs sequentially in terms of what has the lowest cost. So to start, we have both magic and great magic weapon, requiring only 10 and 15 int respectively. Both of these spells add only a pathetic 75 and 90 magic AR base stats. Now, things get a little trickier, as of course, the higher your int, the more damage a buff will do because of better casting tools and higher spell buff due to scaling. But I will go over all the buffs at 40-40 later on, but we can see at base stats, these spells literally are not worth even using. So this is where resins play a role. If you are a low level casting build, you're literally better off just using a resin for a weapon buff just to save your attunement slot for a better spell. And just as a heads up, at 30 plus in, neither of these spells are worth using due to crystal magic weapon. So between 10 and 29 and you're not you're still not getting a substantial amount of damage out of these buffs at all, honestly. It should also be noted that all of these tests are done on fully upgraded staffs and casting tools. So next, we're dealing with Karthus Flame Arc. This is a bit of a weird one because there's really only one viable casting tool for it, being the Pyromancy Flame. And it's the only buff that scales off two stats as well. At base stats, again, you're just better off using a resin, honestly. However, the Karthus Flame ends up becoming quite underwhelming, sadly, and does the least amount of damage of any of the buffs for the same amount of stats invested for some odd reason. And obviously there's like less good buffs, but this is ju it's just very less good. At 40-40, the Pyro Flame has lower spell buff than the best sorcery and miracle casting tools with the same stats invested. For example, at 99 int and faith, the Pyro Glove has less spell buff than the sorcery tools at only 99 int. It would have been nice if the Karthus Flame had the highest max potential damage, but you needed a heavier investment. But sadly, this just isn't the case. At 40-40, it does do acceptable damage. A general rule of thumb to go by is if a buff can apply at least 60 damage to your weapon, it's worth using because that will amount to one less hit to kill on average. 
So we come to Dark Weapon, and really, we're just following a pattern now. More initial stat investment just equals more damage. It is a difficult buff to place, for the same stats invested that is better than Karthus Flame Mark, but given how close in requirements it is to Dark Moon and Lightning Blade, you'd be better off just sinking the extra 5 points in anyway. But even then, no buff is truly worth it until we're at least 40 in any one stat, and by the time we get to 40, Dark Weapon is already out close. And by the time we get to 40, Dark Weapon is already outclassed by two other buffs anyway, so it is a tough one. However, one big advantage to Faith overall is that at 40 Faith, you get a choice of three buffs that hit all for over 60 damage. And Dark Weapon doesn't do that much less anyway, so... You know, Faith is probably the best stat to go for in terms of buffs. We can actually talk about the last three buffs together, Lightning Blade, Dark Moon Blade, and Crystal Magic Weapon. All three of these buffs require 30 invested in either Faith or Int for Crystal Magic Weapon. Now, unlike in previous games, Dark Moon Blade doesn't give the insane damage boost it used to. All three of these buffs apply exactly the same amount of damage to a weapon in the base stats, which in terms of balancing is understandable really. The benefit of Lightning Blade and Dark Moon Blade is that you can use them both on the same build, essentially and be able to pick a buff for whatever your opponent is weakest to. However, in real terms, all three of these buff at base stats only give about 40 to 45 extra damage per hit, which would amount to you being able to kill an opponent in about one less hit, maybe? So far, it doesn't really look as if buffs do all that much for the stats required of them. So, as I've said before, going to 40 is actually the most beneficial starting point for buffs. You want to be at least 40 because otherwise you're going to be doing really underwhelming damage. Now, interestingly, at 40, Crystal Magic Weapon, Dark Moon Blade, and Lightning Blade will all do the same damage. So that means that there isn't actually any disparity between Faith and Intelligence builds in terms of buffs for a little while. Eventually, Dark Moon Blade does out damage Crystal Magic Weapon by a little bit. And like I said, Dark Weapon also does respectable damage at 40 in as well. However, Karthus Flame Mark is definitely not worth using at 25 25. You are not getting your 60 damage out of it, nowhere near that. And obviously magic weapon and great magic weapon you're not going to be using like they won't even be in your fucking mind at that level anyway so there's no point in even really discussing them finally i want to compare all the buffs at a realistic level now this realistic level assumes a max soul level of 120 now if we use the deprived as a base just for easy calculations we can assign 50 stats to vigor and endurance as people aren't, like, nobody wants to go less than 40 HP, 30 endurance, you know? So we've got 70 left. We can assign, like, 10 for vitality or attunement. So this gives us, like, 60 stats for investment. So in other words, 40 strength, 40 dex, or 40 int, 40 faith. Or 70 in any one of these stats. So what do we want to find out? What are our hypotheses? One, what is the best buff for your stats invested? Using a raw longsword, what is the most damage we can get out of a crystal magic weapon at 70 int, dark moon blade, lightning blade, dark weapon at 70 faith, and Karthus at 40 int, 40 faith. This way we can determine what buff gets its damage drop off first, blah 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 blah. 2. Does infusing a weapon with refined and going 40 strength, 40 dex make it do more damage than a raw weapon with 60 invested in a buff? If so, kinda makes buffing somewhat redundant, right? However, 3. Does mixing these two systems yield the best results? So, if we make a refined longsword go to 40 in and 25 strength, 25 dex, does this give the most damage overall? And if so, it means buffs actually have a place in the game, and they aren't completely useless. <laughs> Hooray! So as you can see, we're testing against a totally naked character here. This way we can see with total clarity the differences in the damage everything does. His stats are also set in such a way that his defences are all totally equalised as well. Starting with a raw longsword, which does 208 damage, we can see that 70 in with the Sorcerer's Catalyst and Crystal Magic Weapon will add a respectable 167 damage. Now we've got the same sword, doesn't 208 damage again, except this time with Dark Weapon, 70 Faith and Yorska's Chime, we see it adds less than Crystal Magic Weapon, but still respectable at 152 damage. Of course with armour these numbers are all lesser, but still. Now we can move on to Lightning Blade and Dark Moon Blade. Again, 70 Faith and Yorska's Chime, and at this point they will now out damage Crystal Magic Weapon with 175 damage. So I mean, it's not out damaged by much, but you know, the damage is still there. 
is still objectively better. And at least with Faith, you do get the choice of the three different elements of buffs. So here is proof that for the stats invested into Karthus Flame Arc, it's just not worth it in comparison to the other buffs. I've all mentioned just now that in PvE, this is of course much less relevant and a lot of enemies are weak to fire, but for the most part in run numbers, it's not worth it anyway, given a poultry 132 damage. You also need to level your faith in evenly. Here we see me using Karthus Flame Mark at 70 faith and it does significantly less damage. So we are gradually reaching a conclusion here. We can see at 40 strength, 40 dex, a refined longsword is doing 365 damage. This is incredibly good because this thing's damage can't wear off, however it means that using buffs correctly can give more damage than just the weapon alone. Which is further demonstrated here with our next set of results. At 40 in, 25 strength, 25 dex, with the refined longsword we do a whopping 394 damage. Stay in school kids, it pays to be smart. So uh, there is one buff gone unmentioned until now. Blessed Weapon. Now here we see is back at 40-40 strength dex. And if I use the priest strength to get 15 faith, we can boost our refined longsword's damage to 398. Take what you will with this information, but as far as I'm concerned, this is the most optimal way of maxing out your damage, as you have the consistent high damage and then can push it even further beyond. And that brings us to the end of the video. Now I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it was informative. Now in the background you just see us do the same tests except just with the guy wearing armour now just so you can see that the damage scales. Just a blessed weapon, it's just the crystal magic weapon with 70 int, crystal magic weapon with 40 int. But yeah, in conclusion, I feel that buffs are kind of worth it, kind of not worth it. If all you want to do is maximise damage out of a weapon then I think that you know, the refined with the blessed weapon combo is definitely the best way to go. But obviously, you know, if you're making a caster build, then, you know, it's clear that you can definitely get extra damage out into your weapon. You just need to play about with it a little bit. So, yeah, as I'll say, thank you to everybody. Uh, there's a Patreon, Patreon. Seriously, could not do this shit without you. I couldn't. And, I mean, it might not seem like a lot or whatever, but you've no idea how much I preach. appreciate every single one of you guys, seriously. And everybody give a big shout out to my boy Nicholas Ellis who has been there for me every single day when I've been trying to get footage for this video. So yeah, you can put this all down to him because he's made this process so much fucking easier. So everybody fucking thank him as well. And yeah, I'll try and make videos as fast as I can guys. I'm really sorry, I ended up wasting a whole lot of time trying to make another video and the footage, it just wasn't, just was shit. So yeah, um, that's why I've not put up a video for a while but I'll obviously be try keep pumping them out as much as I can. And if you've got any ideas for something you want to see along the lines of this, because I really enjoy making these kind of videos, then, you know, uh, heads up in the comments and we'll see what we can do. But yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video and bye.